Animations like this can look quite intimidating at first, but they don't have to be hard and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. But there's something really important before we begin. There is this comment by Dark Ray. Brother, I love the video and he's asking also can we have a tutorial on how to do animations like Danco the shorts. Well Dark Ray, that's what we're gonna do in this video. The animation style that I showed you is directly taken from Dan Ko and especially his shorts. He has this amazing like minimalistic style and we're gonna do this in three easy steps. One, we're creating the elements. Two, we're gonna animate those elements. And three is also the secret step and that's stylizing it all. Getting that cool glow, really adding to the vibe of the whole animation. Thanks for all the comments that I got on my latest videos. And now let's just jump into it. We're gonna create a new composition. 4K is fine, but we're gonna change one thing and that's the aspect radio. So we want it vertical because it's a short. Uh, so we're just gonna copy this over and we're gonna press in 2160 and then paste the uh, width. We're gonna change the duration to around 16 seconds. And now we have a nice vertical composition. Now for the example, I actually imported it. So again, all credits go to Danco. What we see is a first a flashing circle that turns into multiple circles. It goes back to a small circle and then some icons around it. Now I won't have time to put everything in this video. So please, if you see some specific effects or some specific things, just let me know in the comments. Just the time code is fine. But let's just get started. So we're gonna create the uh, layers first. We're gonna create a new circle. So what you can do is go to the ellipse tool by holding, uh, holding down your mouse on the rectangle tool. We're gonna have a fill for the moment. We're gonna create it white and we're gonna have a stroke. We're gonna make this white too. And we'll make the stroke, for example, like 15, I would say. We always need to see a bit on what it would look like. I think this should be fine, but we can always change it later. I'm just gonna center this by going to align and then aligning the layer. Now, this is great for the first animation. Now, before we duplicate this, we need to make sure the anchor point is in the center. I'm gonna do this by using the pen behind tool. We're, we can move this now and when we hold command, we can center it. And now we duplicate this layer. We're gonna scale it down, I would say to uh, like a small, small circle. We're gonna turn the bottom one off and now we're gonna open this layer and we're gonna open the contents, open the ellipse, and then you'll see the fill. We're gonna turn the fill off. This is great. Now, what we see is that the stroke is a bit too small. So we can always change the stroke with here. So for example, we change it to 20, or maybe a bit more, maybe even 30, and we'll zoom out, and I like this. Now we have one circle all alone in our <laughs> composition, and we want to make it a happy place. We want to make it more cozy and make him have more friends. So we're gonna duplicate this and this is a really boring job. Um, so I'm gonna skip most of the part, but I'll show you how to do it. So basically what you just do is press command on Mac or control D to duplicate it. And now you just move it by holding shift. And now you just do this a lot of times. Now, if you made one row, it is easier because then you can select the whole row and then duplicate it at once. But you first have to get there and we're gonna be there in three, two, one. And there we go, all of our circles. Now what we're gonna do to make it a bit more clean in this composition, we're gonna select everything. We're gonna select everything, layer and then pre-compose to make it a bit more clean. And we'll call this, we'll call this circles. And there we go. Now, this is just some simple icons. To be honest with you, I think this part is quite boring and I think it's way more cool to, to go more in depth into this animation. I think it's a really cool animation and I think you guys like this more. So for that, we're gonna get the big ball. We can actually call this big ball. And then we're gonna call this big space ball. I really love our naming. We're gonna move this a bit to the, to the back. So at least it's like separated a bit. And um, we can even cut this uh, first big ball off by holding Alt and then bracket to the right. We're gonna create a new layer, layer new. We're gonna create a solid, color doesn't matter. Now I've been playing a bit with these settings of particle world, so you can just copy them over. Basically what I did is I created the particle world. I changed the birth rate to 0.5, longevity to 20, and then for the particle I use a textured disc with the source layer 
big ball too. Now, what is in this source layer, you might ask, is just four balls uh, stacked on top of each other. This is nothing special, guys. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And now uh, the birth to death, I also changed to white. And that's it. So if I turn this off, turn this on, I'm gonna scroll through it. You see, we have the effect that we need. We can already put motion blur on this by activating motion blur. And later on, we're gonna create the glow effect on it. So it will look really good. So if I turn off these circles and turn on our big space ball, it will look a bit like this. Now it won't look perfect, like exactly the same, but perfection is on the other side of progression. At the end of the day, I just want to show you the basics basically and to inspire you, but also to create something for yourself. It starts with copying others, but at the end of the day, you want to create your own style. So actually it's always nice if it's not perfect and it's not exactly the same. Now we're gonna go to our second step, which is the animation part. I'm really excited for this. Our first step is to animate this ball into the screen. We're gonna uh, just keyframe the scale by pressing S for scale. I think I'm gonna make it a bit smaller, something like this. Then I'm gonna go a couple frames further, something like this, make it really big and then make it go small again. We can probably even make this a bit quicker, something like this. And then we actually go to quite small, something like this. Now we go into the contents, we're gonna go and open up the ellipse and then we'll open up the fill. Now the fill has a transparency and that's great because we can keyframe this. Basically making sure that after it's around here, it will become transparent. Now we'll move this a bit further and we're gonna go to S for scale. And actually I'm gonna make this a bit bigger and then it's gonna go big again and small again. I'm gonna press U to show all the keyframes and I'm gonna move this over and actually something like this and something like this. I'm gonna copy this keyframe, paste it over here, paste it over here. So basically there's a bit of a pause. So it goes like pop, 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 pop. Then it goes big again and then it changes into this smaller ball and then into all these big balls or this whole grid of balls. Maybe we should call them circles. Is it, maybe it's a better way to call them. We go back to our composition. So we make sure that after a while, something like here, I'm gonna set a new keyframe. I'm gonna scale it up a bit and then I'm gonna scale it down to the same percentage that we have our balls, which is on top of my head, 16%. But we're, we're gonna have to check that. We're gonna see 16%. Great. Then we'll go to our circles layer. We're gonna move this over and we're gonna change the big ball so it ends here. Now we're gonna turn on the circles. Now you'll see this whole big layer of all these circles. We're gonna go into our circles layer and we're gonna animate this. And it's actually quite easy. The middle ball is our first ball. And we need to make sure that all the balls go into this ball. So we're gonna press P for this position and we're gonna press P for this position. So you'll see all these positions will be different, which is great because we can keyframe this. What we can do is basically select all the layers except our first layer. We're gonna select them all by holding shift. We're gonna press P. We're gonna go in about maybe like 20, 22 frames. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna press the stopwatch. We're gonna go back to the beginning. Now we're gonna copy over this position data. So this is 1080. We're gonna paste that here and then we'll paste everywhere. Now let's see this animation. I think this looks really cool, but there's one effect to help sell the effect. So because they're transparent, you'll see this cool effect. Actually, I really like the effect, but let's just uh, select all the layers and you can change the fill to black. It will lag. Then it's time for a big stretch while it's waiting. And then we press okay. Now we'll preview our animation and it looks almost exactly the same as the uh, original animation. I think in our example, it actually goes a bit quicker. So we can still select the uh, keyframes a bit quicker like this. We go back to our layers and then we're just gonna cut this off because we're gonna skip this part. And then uh, the last part is with the big ball. So we're gonna turn the big ball on and we're gonna turn the uh, particles on. We're gonna move these, uh, I mean the big space ball. I'm gonna move this particle layer to the end, something like here. Now there's a really cool like halo effect around it and it's really easy to do with this effect. What you can do is just duplicate this layer. We're gonna remove the fill, so turn it off. 
we're gonna create the stroke uh, to be around maybe like 50 i would say we're gonna press on for scale we're gonna scale it down a bit we're gonna move it under the layer and we're gonna scale it up after a while like for example here from here we'll move it up like here then we'll press t for the transparency or actually opacity we're gonna keyframe this too we're gonna press u for all the keyframes and we're gonna go back to our first keyframe we're gonna set a keyframe for the opacity we're gonna move to the last keyframe and we're gonna basically make sure that it fades out now this is way too quick as you can see you can move it a bit something like this and then it's like a smooth fade now we can even fade this layer in too something like this and then we'll go to the last step and in this step i'll show you the secret step or the secret trick that he uses in every video to make it uh, really beautiful like create a nice vibe and that's a glow and for the glow we use the glow effect so we're gonna put the glow effect for example on our first animation on the big ball and it's actually quite easy so there's already a small glow as you can see um, we're gonna change the glow colors to a and b colors we're gonna change the color b to white we're gonna change the glow radius and we're gonna change the glow intensity not too much i would say 1.5 something like that and that looks already really cool you could increase the uh, glow intensity or even the radius a bit um, i think in the effect it's it's quite heavy it's, it would be around 50 i would say and then later on on these balls you can just copy this glow over we can go to the circles and we can or just base it on our comp i think that's the best option actually uh, and then as you can see we can see the glow and here you need to adjust it too now uh, why we need to adjust it is quite simple the glow looks different on depending on the size of the object so in this case because it's quite a small size we can even increase the glow intensity a bit but for example if we do this on the big ball and we're going to change the glow intensity it's going to look really harsh now this looks great and i've go ahead and put this on the circle already the big space ball and as you can see there's a glow effect on this too and on our last layer we're going to paste it to on our particles and again we probably need to change the radius a bit to i would say maybe 30 or maybe even 20 and maybe the glow intensity to i would say quite high actually i like the glow radius quite high too something like 50. now you will have something that will look like this please keep the comments coming because i love to hear your feedback but also if you see some cool creators that you want to have tutorials on do let me know because i love creating these videos for you guys don't forget to subscribe and then i'll see you next time